access, not only access to our program within the Medicaid system or the workers' compensation system, but also access <coughs> as it relates to private insurance policies, those that we go home and we use every day. We want to make sure that we're looking at access and also affordability issues. One of the ways that we hope to make sure that we're doing that is by creating a policy and an atmosphere that, that allows creativity and innovation to come to Ohio. So Ohio is ripe for some of the innovation that, that we're looking at around the country. While we're doing that, we need to make sure that our policies and our innovation are very focused and very geared towards demanding some kind of measurable outcome so that we know that the dollars that we are investing, your dollars, your taxpayer dollars, are actually being used in an appropriate and effective manner as we move forward. You know, Medicaid is the, one of the largest, is the largest portion of the state budget. So taking care of it and making sure that we're managing it appropriately is the best way we can ensure Ohioans are getting the best bang for their dollar. In doing that, we're going to be looking at working with our private partners and also going into our public partners and asking them to remove those silos that we have that function very independently and refuse to look at and recognize the silo that's right next to them. The new buzzword of the day is apparently cylinders of excellence. So we need to all say cylinders of excellence. And, and we're replacing that with the term, si or we're replacing silos with that term, with the idea that we need to know that these are all cylinders, meaning they're moving, they're growing, they're actually moving forward, and we need to make sure that we're using those as we engage change and innovation in the health care. Through, through the, what we do in the General Assembly, a lot of our work in the human services area really centers and focuses on what happens in the budget. Because human services, you're touching a lot of independent lives, you need to move slowly and but determinedly as you go forward. And so it begins with the subcommittee work as we set the stage for the policy. We'll be taking that uh, budget, making it our own budget as we move through subcommittee meeting and creating our priorities. You know, as, as we look at specifically what we're intending to do with it, it will all focus on how we innovate, how we manage, how we create a, an atmosphere of engagement on, on behalf of our participants in the program, with the sole outcome for those that can, obviously we know that in Ohio some of our Medicaid uh, folks will never have the opportunity and will never look to the opportunity to getting off of Medicaid and off of entitlement programs and we need to respect that. Um, but we also know that we've got a core group of folks whose mission should be to use Medicaid and our state entitlement programs as a t transition to somewhere else in, in their life. So we're going to be focusing that in this, pro in this upcoming General Assembly. We will, however, be looking at a couple of very specific areas. Uh, infant mortality, which is one of the areas that we started in the last General Assembly, certainly the Senate took the lead for us in that area. It's critically important. It's very, not only is it a, a human driver in the state of Ohio, an emotional driver in the state of Ohio, but bluntly, for taxpaying purposes, it is a financial driver in the state of Ohio, and one that we really need to wrap our arms around and find out really what can we do to drive forward uh, that mission. And I think we look forward to working with the Senate as, as they really champion that issue and we do our part in the House side. Certainly we'll be looking at the Medicare and the Medicaid program. You know, our, our, and our, excuse me, the Medicaid program and the Workers' Compensation program. What can we do to continue to, to develop and bring forward managed care that really looks at the entire person? One of the most exciting reasons why health care is the best pil pillar, again, thank you, Speaker, is that it really, if you believe in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know that health care sort of subs in for that bottom layer. Healthy people can be educated. Healthy people can have jobs. Healthy people can live independent lives. Healthy people can move forward. And, and so we need to make sure we're engaging that full continuum of care as we, as we look at our program. So we'll be looking at reforms in that area, of innovations in that area, and how do we make sure we're getting solid outcomes for every cent that we're investing uh, in those programs. Our entitlement programs. You know, an entitlement program should be a pathway. It should be a transitional pathway. It should not be a forever pathway uh, for the vast majority of folks in Ohio. And we really need to ask every one of our entitlement programs, what are you doing to not just encourage people to participate in the program, but where is their process and their pathway out of that program? So we're going to be challenging these programs to do that. Unemployment insurance certainly was a topic that we studied over the summer, and we're going to be introducing some very specific legislation uh, in the near future, having to look at how we're deriving income, how we're handling our benefits, and most importantly is the governance process uh, that we have in place, those policies around governance and administrative. Are they effectively managing that program? Uh, one that you'll see in very short order uh, works on our heroin epidemic. You know, we've struggled with, with how to not only 
not only fix the problem, but we know that this problem took years and years to, to come to fruition, and now it is here exploding in Ohio. In fact, for the last 10 years, we've been one of the top 10 states in, in Ohioans who have died for un, unintended accidental overdoses. That's got to stop. We are fortunate uh, that we've got a crew of, of representatives who've really tackled this as a primary uh, mission of them for them, and the naloxone uh, protocols will be coming back to us in full steam with the intent of getting this passed so that we can provide some life-saving um, life protocols for Ohioans. You know, naloxone and the protocols wrapped around it, it provides us with the ability to uh, essentially reverse an overdose. Additionally, it's a, a drug that cannot be abused itself, which allows us to do this in a, in a way that is appropriate. Working with our pharmacies and our, and our physicians establishing solid protocol so that we can do this in a non-prescriptive way so that we make this more, more available uh, to Ohioans so that we can no longer be in that top ten category. That's one we don't want don't to live in. Um, so with that I will close and I'll again state that you know, it's the goal of, of the speaker and the 2020 vision uh, to make sure that legislation that we do not only produces the assistance that is needed by Ohioans, but make sure that we're, present, we're providing a pathway to a healthier and more independent lifestyle. And uh, 